Hello, my name is Svetlana Shmankova. I am a recent addition to the Anime Cons TV host family. I'm also a manga author, uh, mostly published by Young Press, uh, currently working on a new book for them that I can't talk about yet. But what I can talk about is, once upon a time, I did a book called DramaCon. Uh, DramaCon was my first full-length series, and it's a romance uh, story set in the world of anime conventions. Uh, hence, Anime Cons TV podcast. Uh, this book, while being entirely fictional, I didn't want to get sued. Uh, it was directly inspired by my experiences in the artist alleys back in the day when I was just starting out uh, on this whole treacherous path of being a manga author. Uh, I used to do the con circuit pretty heavily back then, uh, which is, back then I mean like a decade or so ago. Uh, this was before the internet was what it is now, and I'm talking pre-Twitter, pre-Tumblr, back when LiveJournal was a thing. Uh, I fell off the face of the convention scene for a while, but lately I've been getting back into it. And the first thing that stood out to me was um, how much things have changed and expanded. Uh, artist alleys have become just absolute treasure troves of everything you could ever wish for. Uh, and if your favorite thing doesn't exist, like you couldn't find it at a table somewhere in an artist alley, someone will draw it for you, possibly right there, or maybe you could commission them to do it slightly later. Uh, but it's just an amazing environment now uh, that is populated by amazing artists and amazing people. And one of the biggest things for me was the <laughs> the table setups that people do now. And I mean, I'm sure you've seen some architecture of some of these tables is of these artists display would make Inception jealous. So. Uh, speaking of amazing artists, I uh, there's an artist that I met at SAC Anime last year, 2013, the summer convention. Uh, her name is Melissa McCommon. Melissa, say hi. Hi. Um, she's on the other screen and will appear any second now. Uh, but there she is, Melissa. Uh, so Melissa and I met uh, actually through... Uh, it was deviant art, right, Melissa? Uh, you had messed. Yeah. Was it? I was complaining about possibly having a sketch jam or not having it. Uh, the fact that they didn't have it available. Um, uh, I I started following you on deviant art like as soon as I found out you had a deviant art. So I've been following you for a couple of months, and then when you posted up saying that you were going to be at Stack Anime, I was like, oh, I'm going to be there. Why I don't gonna be there? It was fate. Should, it was fate. It was. It was. And I actually struggled for like 15 minutes of just like, should I message her? No, I shouldn't message her. But I should message her, but I don't want to. So I finally got the guts to just send you a little. I'm gonna be there too. And then we started. Then you brought up Sketch Jam, and I was like, we should do this. Why did? How? Why haven't we done this at a con before? At a back anime before? And I am so glad you messaged me, and I have to say, without a shadow of a doubt, that was the best, the best organized sketch jam I have ever been to. Um, and I just got confirmation from a, from a con that I get to hold it again. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah, that was a really good event. And one of the things that I loved, uh, especially, was the fact that it was a large room, it was brightly lit, uh, so everybody could actually see their drawings. Uh, and it was, it sounds like it complied, complied with all the requirements of the convention, which I'm sure the con staff appreciated. And, like, you had surveys, you had sign-up sheets, you had cookies. Like, you put an amazing amount of effort into that event. And one of the questions that I actually wanted to ask of you, uh, if you don't mind, is to uh, share the experience of organizing that. And, like, if somebody wanted to do something similar at another convention. Um, obviously, yeah. Sack Enemy's got you, uh, but other people might want to do it at other conventions. What should they watch out for? Like, what's the process uh, to get something like that together? My process was a little different because uh, I, know the, I know the guy who uh, 
he helps run the artist alley, and uh, I actually do some artwork for his uh, publishing company every once in a while. And I said, I was talking with one of the guests who's going to be at this con, and they proposed the idea of a sketch jam. How would I go about getting that started? And he had said, uh, I'll just I'll talk to the guy who runs the con and see if we can do this. So uh, he thought the guy who runs the con, I think his name is Dan. He said that he liked the idea, but I would have to run it. And I thought that I thought for sure they were just gonna get somebody else to do it, and uh, I would just attend as an artist just to draw and hang out. And so when I got offered to start working on it, uh, I started talking with. Uh, Jason, who's the guy who helps run the artist, I started talking with Jason about like what what do I need to do to get this started. And he just said, uh, I just need to talk to the artist about it and tell them about it any way that I can. And uh, pretty much anything I want to do goes. So I had the idea of just well, since it's the first one, I should probably give some kind of flyer out since I I'm not very uh, active on the on the artist alley Facebook page, mm -hmm. so I just I made up a quick flyer to pass out to the people at to the art attending artists at the con. That's and right, I remember told, this. Yeah, and I just briefly told them, hey, we're gonna have we're gonna have this artist thing, uh, totally formal, you, well, not formal, uh, informal. You can just bring your sketchbook, hang out if you uh, want. We're Gonna be, I'm gonna be bringing some stuff to do trades with. So if you have anything you might want to trade for artwork, I'm gonna have my stuff if you want to do a trade. And uh, I wanted to. Oh, my cat's laying herself in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my cat knows how to open the door. Oh, so, uh, interesting cats. So uh, I wanted to be able to record it everything that people liked or wanted to change so that I can show the head guy. We should probably do this more because I like the idea of having something to do on a Friday night for the uh, the swap meet because between the artist alley closing and the swap meet there's like a two three hour gap and if mm -hmm. you're not staying in Sacramento then not really much to do except for go eat. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, like the uh, I was only able to come for like half an hour, I think it was, unfortunately, I really wanted to say. Uh, but what struck me when I got there was the turnout. The turnout was so great. Like, I didn't so many expect people that did. many people. Well, but like I the flyers, well, I, like to me, I think uh, it was a great decision on your part to, uh, A, take into account uh, the programming uh, that, hey, there is nothing interesting going on in this area. Uh, B, hand out flyers uh, to the artist alley participants. So, like, that's your target audience right there for this event. Uh, and the fact mm -hmm. that, you know, you prepared far enough in advance to have all this stuff done, uh, which is amazing. Yes. Yeah. So, did you run I'm really into. I'm really glad I did this. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, you were saying? Oh, I was just wondering if you ran into any difficulties. The only difficulty that I had really was the staff was not notified of the event. So there were people trying to come in that weren't a part of the artist alley. They were just trying to find something to do. And so I had to sit out in the hallway for a good couple of minutes until somebody walked by so that I could say, could, could I get a staff person to check, I, to check badges? Because it was supposed to be just an artist alley exclusive thing because we, we really don't get much ex to do ex that's exclusive just to us except for we get to get into the artist alley and the dealer's hall about an hour early. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So that was really the only thing was I had to check I had to badges for a bit instead of hanging out with everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, once that got once uh, somebody came and sat down that was that was really the only thing. It went pretty smoothly. A lot smoother yeah. than I anticipated. <laughs> Well, it sounds to me like you were also very closely in contact with the con personnel uh, when you were planning this, so I'm sure that helped uh, smooth a lot of details out. And like they were communica communicative with you as well? Mm -hmm. I had to, uh, actually the day after the con, I started 
bugging uh, Jason about doing the next one. <laughs> I was like, what do I need to do? Here's all the surveys. Everybody wants it again next year. People who couldn't come wanted to want to go to the next one. Uh, how soon do we need to get started on this so that it can happen? That's excellent. That's a good, that's a good sign that people loved it. So let's talk a little yeah. bit about you. Uh, you're an artist and obviously an exhibitor in the Artist Alley, uh, and you do a webcomic called Epic Chaos. Uh, how long have you been doing that? I've been drawing it for five years, but I convinced myself to stop redoing it about three years ago and have continued from <laughs> there on now. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. Uh, okay, so what came first? Uh, did you exhibit in Artist Alleys before you started the webcomic, or did you start the webcomic first and that led to convention participation? Chronologically, I started the webcomic first, and when I finally decided to just stop redoing it, uh, a couple months, uh, two months after that, I got offered my first Artist Alley table and decided, why not? I've always wanted to, be. I've always wanted to do one. Might be like drop from Comic-Con. <laughs> oh, you had read the book by then, okay. I actually read Drama Con when my uh, freshman year of high school and uh, I was after reading that I was like, I wanna be a con artist. Oh, and okay. <laughs> I, I actually to to get prepped for the con, I read through the entire series. I I borrowed, I bought the giant book for my boyfriend. So I was like, this is my favorite series. You'll like it too. And I I kind of permanently borrowed it. <laughs> well, excellent. Okay. Uh, so how was uh, what was the first con, and what was that the experience like for you? That first uh, first small... artist alley experience. It was a small convention called SACCON, and it, it's held in Sacramento at the Scottish Rite Center. And when I started going there, there was like a thousand, maybe a little bit more than that, attendees per con. And so I found out about that convention because I got an email from a, a group that I was a part of saying, so we have, this, we have this con coming up, and we have one table left. We can't seem to get rid of it. Does anybody want it for for like half price, and I was so nervous that I was like, I I don't think I'm gonna do this. I mean, I'm, I my art's not that good. I don't have anything, and my dad had just come home from work and saw the email from from over my shoulder, and he's like, if you don't sign up for that table, I'll sign up for you, and you don't want that. Oh wow! Well done, Dad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And he's. He's been he chaperoned me to my events for almost a year until him and my mom decided, you know what, she can drive the these herself. We don't need to take the car. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. My father took me to my first convention as well. Great <laughs> for dads. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I'm I'm sure that first uh, alley artist alley experience was. Uh, very unique, and you probably learned a lot of things. Like, is there stuff that you do differently now than you did oh, that first yeah. time, besides driving yourself? Yeah, uh, my table setup was. I tried printing everything at home, which only worked for so long until I ran out of ink in the printer. <laughs> so, uh, I started getting my stuff printed at Staples, and my first time going there, uh, or I didn't go there to pick up the prints, but they said that they had the prints done for me, and so I had school, so my mom said she'd pick them up for me. They screwed up my order at first, and they printed like three times the amount of prints that I wanted, and so my mom ended up getting them all for me, so I'm still getting rid of prints to this day, and I've been doing cons for three years. But, uh, so I, oh, wow. I so they yeah. printed like a thousand, <laughs> two thousand, ten thousand. Like two. I wanted to get about fifty about a uh, 50, 60 prints. I got like 250. Oh, wow. And it, you can wallpaper old. a room with that. Yeah, it's old It's old artwork, so now people see my new stuff and they're like, what's that? <laughs> so uh, I, I did a lot of my uh, printing at home and everything, so I made like stickers and bookmarks and things like that, and I have this giant 
a piece of glass, which used to be a door to a cabinet, and what we did was we put all my uh, prints and everything underneath on the table, and we put the, the uh, glass on top of it to protect it. So it was kind of like a kind of like a restaurant table, kind of like the uh, kind of like those uh I don't even know what they're called. But anyway, so okay. we did that, and then uh, the more I started doing cons, the more I was like, I should be building up. So I invested in grid wall. That was the best investment ever. I used, oh like, yeah, okay. I've seen those around. Yeah, they're amazing. Then uh, once I started. Uh, publicize my webcomic more, I decided to invest into a banner, which I love, but it takes up so much space that I, can, I only can use it at certain events that give me like a good space behind my table. Right, yeah. My group and I recently finally got a banner, like my comics group, uh, Banner Comics. Yeah, and oh, it looks great, but uh, it's a bit large. <laughs> So, like, these things, uh, you, you need a trunk of a car, like, a suitcase will not do. Yeah. Do you have any resources to recommend that you found helpful uh, when you were uh, making your journey uh, of being in Artist Alley's years, year after year? For example, one that I recently found that was uh, really interesting to me is uh, artistalleyinfo.tumblr.com. Uh, uh, like, have we, have there been any websites that have been helpful to you? Uh, when I started doing cons about three years ago, there wasn't much, but uh, one there was actually a book that I found that was really helpful. It's called uh, How to Make Web Comics. Actually, I have my copy right here. My books are so amazing. Yeah, my boyfriend knows that I love that book, so he. He bought a copy for me, and at the, the same time he gave me a copy, a friend of mine had bought me a copy, and I'd had a copy I rented from the library, so I had three copies for a while. <laughs> You'll never run out. Yeah, so it's called How to Make Web Comics, and it's done by four web comic artists, and it's how to basically start from just the idea in your head until you're exhibiting at cons, and they have a really good chapter in here on exhibiting, uh, being a guest, doing panels, all sorts of stuff. So. I I like held on to the to that book for almost a month before my first con and read read and reread that chapter on how to exhibit at a, a con and uh, I had started making some friends who had been in the who had been in the artist alley a bit longer than I have and they gave me some tips like uh, having us uh, having at least ten prints of or ten copies of each of your prints. Uh, Kind of having a uh, a sales pitch of like these prints are on sale. This is what I do. Uh, hi, you want to chit chat? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, those that stuff is really helpful. Like I could never uh, w when I did do conventions back then uh, and was behind a table. All my friends would laugh at me because I just I hid behind my sketchbook. Like I would not communicate at all, and I would actively discourage people from buying my stuff. I would say like, oh, this is not, it's not that great. Uh, so just actively um, talking down what was in front of me, you know, the fruit of my labors rather than, you know what, this is not bad. People have liked this. Uh, and like, the, this just never entered my head that that's what I was doing. I was just being shy. Uh, yeah. but. Uh, the end result of it was, you know, I was projecting a persona uh, unknowingly of someone who uh, did not have anything of value to offer to the world. Yeah. Which, as an artist, you should never do at, a at an artist convention. So yeah, yeah, those tips are so Love important. Love yourself. Love your work. It takes time and energy to do that. It really does. I mean, if you don't, if you don't root for your work, who will? If yeah. you, as an artist, don't root for your work. Yeah. So that's some important stuff. And that book, I highly recommend it. Actually, when uh, ever I'm talking to people, I'm like, let me show you my Bibli. Actually, can you hold it up again? If it's the book that I'm thinking of. Uh, how to make webcomics. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is actually a website now. Yeah, they um, have a website, and they just released the second book to it, which I need to get. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, because the website is a, it's a subscription site that's a resource uh, for people who make webcomics. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can subscribe. I think it's 30 bucks a year, uh, which is pretty cheap for the information that they offer. And they also have uh, discounts for printers and I think even some con tables. Uh, like the, you can get a break in the price uh, if you're part of that community. I might have to look this up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I love that book. It's helped. Right. One, one of the biggest things that I love about it is it doesn't just pertain to web comics. You can, you can apply all the information in there to anything. If you're a writer working on a novel you want to publish, that book's got the end the answers you need, and just anything, all the uses. Huh, that's good advice, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for sharing that with uh, mainly me, but everybody else as well once this is published. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I, I need to do so much more research on this. I, back when I did do Artist Alleys, I was not good at it, uh, and now that I'm starting to think about possibly maybe doing Artist Alley, if I can work up the courage. Uh, like, there's so much to learn. Uh, all these all these things, you know, like, yeah, have a minimum of 10 prints, uh, don't, like, scare people away. Uh. Yeah. Actually, I have a link to um, something. After my first Artist Alley, artist alley experience, um, I have a friend on DeviantArt who runs a really successful uh, group called uh, Manga Apps. And I have heard of it. Yes, um, her her tag name is um, Luminate, and we've been messaging each other back and forth for years. And actually, we just recently started sending each other stuff through the mail. And I'm gonna send her more stuff. There's so many people I need to send them to. Uh, <laughs> I, after I did my first artist alley experience, uh, she had messaged me saying, "Could you, could you tell me a bit about it?" And so I ended up writing an article on. Um, being an artist, being in the artist alley after my first time, so I'll send you the link. Up. Okay, yeah, I'll, we can mention it. Uh, Patrick will do like a thing with uh, a, a thing, <laughs> links a thing at the end that we that I wouldn't be able to comprehend. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for doing this, and please tell people where they can find you and your work uh, online so that they can uh, check it out and read it and be amazed. Well, um, my webcomic, Epic Chaos, can be found at uh, epicchaos.smackjeeves.com, and I'm, I have a deviant art, and I recently got a Tumblr. It was supposed to be an art Tumblr, but all the all the things are reblogged. I that's what I do with uh, my Tumblr too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that's another thing. Tumblr is amazing for art resources. Uh, I follow a lot of art that uh, post really cool tutorials, and yes. I'll save them. I'll save them the pictures so that I can uh, reference back to them whenever I'm working on something. So, what's your name on Tumblr? I actually I don't think I follow you because I didn't know you had a Tumblr. <laughs> it's Melissa Oodles of Doodles. Okay, Melissa. Melissa's Oodles of Doodles? Yes, all one word. <laughs> okay. I will find you and I will friend you. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much, Melissa. I thank you for taking the time out of your day to share your experiences with us. Uh, and thank you again for that amazing sketch jam that you organized at Sec Enemy last summer. I. I haven't been to one that amazing in a long time. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and uh, people go in front of her and look at her stuff. <laughs> thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. Yes, we'll do this again. And hopefully, I'll see everybody. I'll see some people at the con. Cool. All right, and now to mention some of the resources that we talked about. Uh, so there is artist Ill Artist Alley info at tumblr.com. Uh, there's Anime Boston site also has a really good Artist Alley beginner guide uh, on their site. Uh, also, there is the site that Melissa mentioned, manga apps, deviantart.com. 
So check them out. 